Hello everybody, my name is Big Citrus and let's get into it. I'm not even doing an intro for this video, we're just jumping straight into it. This is why Overwatch is better than your favorite game. This video is gonna be the classic Big Citrus, about 80% jokes, 20% seriousness. But let me just be serious with you for a moment. I've said this time and time again, I've been talking about this game for three years, it seems I am unable to escape it. Apex Legends is one of the best games I have ever played in my entire life, but it is ran and handled by complete fucking troglodyte morons. They wash their hair with their own spit and they wipe their ass with cardboard. Like I've always said, Apex is not a bad game, it could be so good, and perhaps even the best game out right now with just minor change that the companies that handle them seem to ignore. But like, why is Overwatch better than Apex? I'll tell you why. Overwatch, at the very least, when compared to Apex, even though Overwatch is also handled by some uh, interesting people. You know, Overwatch, at the very least, was like a skill-based game for the most part. Like, let's take a character like Moira, for example. Moira is a very difficult character to play. It is really difficult to know which button to press when you need to do damage and when you need to do healing someone. It is really hard. And sometimes you might even get shot at and your ability that allows you to become invulnerable and fly 50 feet across the map is on cooldown. And that is honestly something that's just really hard to deal with. And I don't think Apex really has anything like that. Like what? What character in Apex has the hardest mechanics to master? Probably the movement. Like what? Pathfinder's movement probably and like Octane's movement. Well, they nerfed that out of the game because anything that had a high skill ceiling actually took skill to use got nerfed. That's why marksman weapons that were really good on mouse and keyboard, like the G7 Scout and most of the snipers have been continuously nerfed. Overwatch kind of does the same thing, but I feel like for the most part, they at least add things in the game that have high skill ceiling ceilings and are mostly interesting. They're completely different styles of games, but they both have interesting and unique characters that are the main component of these games. Also, Overwatch actually has like decent events and things that come out. When a new Overwatch season drops, it actually feels like the game changes a lot. When a new Apex season drops, no one cares and the battle pass is dog shit and there's like 50 collection events that will be scattered throughout the season that literally add nothing and change nothing, but they just add more skins to the game and that's simply it. Can't wait for that new Apex season though, the, uh, you know, ranked 6.0 looks really good. Truly looking forward to that one. Honestly, I think it's the woke agenda respawn. That's that's the main issue. Like, look at how woke the Overwatch devs are. They just added Venture, a character who eats rocks. What progressive characters has respawn ever added? Oh, look, we added a bat to the game. No one wanted a bat in Apex Legends. This is the woke liberal agenda that I'm tired of seeing in my games. Bats are not characters. Moving on. Who the fuck plays Rainbow Six Siege? No, seriously. Only people who play Rainbow Six Siege are people who are too poor to afford a PC or the most try-hard wannabe Jinxie fanboys you'll ever see in your entire life. <laughs> Always talking about Graham, Graham, how about you get in the shower? Get in the shower, you stinky fuck. There are like a billion characters in Rainbow Six Siege and I can name two of them. There's a dude with the sledgehammer and there's a guy with the admittedly very sexy mustache. Also, are there any attractive women in Rainbow Six Siege? Yeah, I didn't think so. But that guy with the mustache. <laughs> Boy, oh boy. When you first joined the Rainbow Six Siege operators Bye. list, I knew you were something Sunshine. special. Also, Rainbow Six Siege is one of those games that gets like a new revamped, reworked like update like every like year. I'm really happy that Overwatch 2 hasn't done that, really only giving us one huge revamp update since the game has come out. And for the most part, it's for the best, except for that dog shit ranking system. What game has a better ranking system than Overwatch, you might say? <laughs> That's literally it. It's literally the only thing I will give Valorant over Overwatch. Valorant's ranking system is actually pretty good, and I feel like accurate for the most part. Yeah, that's it. Besides that, if you want a tactical shooter that actually takes skill and has well-designed maps, you can go play Counter-Strike. Um, oh fuck, let's just do Counter-Strike really quickly. <laughs> This game's like a million years old. I like the base game of Counter-Strike a lot. I think the amount of cases that there are is just really, really enjoyable. Like, honestly, I know everyone like puts so much time into the round base mini game, but I don't really care for it. Cases are just hearing that sound just, oh, keeps me up at night. Okay, we're done with the segment inside the segment. Back to Valorant. Look, unless you're a pedophile or a 15-year-old girl with daddy issues who will be accosted by a pedophile, Valorant is just not the game for you. If you actually want a healthy social life and friends, do not play this game. The only way to get better at this game is playing it 29 hours a day and just memorizing the exact way the guns shoot and, and the crosshair placement on every single angle on every single map. That's the only way you're ever gonna get better at this game. People talk about how bad Overwatch's visual clutter is, but look at this shit, man. What the fuck am I looking at? Also, like I said about that character who eats rocks earlier, they happen to be non-binary. That's really cool. Valorant added a character that happened to be non-binary and they're Scottish. 
Look, I know we're supposed to be inclusive on this channel. I'm just tired of the woke leftist LGBTQ agenda getting in my way, and I have to say this about Clove, the new agent in Valorant. Scottish people are not people. Get the fuck away from me, sheep fucker. <laughs> Uh, moving on to uh, Riot Games' other game, League of Legends. Are you guys really going to have me argue that Overwatch is a better game than League of Legends? Do you, like, is that what you want? Do you guys want me to argue that? I'll have a 90-minute video about how Overwatch is better than League of Legends. I'll go into it. I'll fucking hammer it out. You know, despite all of the issues that Overwatch does have, they're better than everything about League of Legends. Guys, I have to commit something. I've actually never played them at League of Legends. Like, I I've never even installed it on my computer. Is it good? Should I play it? I don't know. Let me know. But every League of Legends fan I've ever met tells me, do not play this game. I don't know, man. I'm gonna say Overwatch is better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. On, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on my gut on this one. <laughs> Judging by the millions of people that tuned in to my Overwatch versus To Fortress 2 hour-long video essay, ultimately breaking down which game is better and really going into the nitty-gritty detail of each games, you guys really love that. So. I think I'll make this quick, and for the people who love that video so much, they can go rewatch it here. The only thing I think Team Fortress 2 has on Overwatch is that Team Fortress 2 has more men in the game, and they're very attractive as well. And if it wasn't for this, I don't know, I just wouldn't really be interested. As attractive as a character like the Medic and the Heavy are with their big, burling chest covered in hair and sweat, I don't know. The men of Overwatch do have a lot going on for them. The short but compact stature of a character like Torbjorn with a beard going down to his knees just- It just awakens something uncontrollable in my loins. And just Ramatra. That big, beef-hulking robot of a man. Oh, I just want to treat Ramatra like my HP OfficeJet Pro 9125E all-in-one printer, color printer for small-medium business, print, copy, scan, fax, instant ink, eligible, print from phone or tablet, touchscreen, smart advanced scan printer, and fill him with ink. But, oh, look at the engineer. That hard hat. <laughs> you know, I want to give him something hard. <laughs> Now, some of you might say, what about the all the attractive big booty busty bitches in Overwatch? I don't care. I don't care about girls. They're icky and gross. So I was going to do like a segment on Overwatch versus Call of Duty and everything here. Uh, but I actually thought it would be funnier if I just tell you guys how I accidentally got uh, the world record time for uh, Zetsubo no Shima, which is a Call of Duty Zombies map. So one of my friends of mine had never done the Zetsubo no Shima Easter egg, and we were trying to like get all of the, the gate worms, because you know, in Black Ops 3 Zombies, you had to get the little gate worms in order, and, and the summoning key from Shadows of Evil. You had to get them to be able to do the super Easter egg, which was basically like a big destiny raid if you were playing Destiny. Um, to, on the final map revelations to get the ultimate reward and achievement. So we're trying to do all of these Easter eggs with him so he has all of the achievements and like the little gate worms you get for completing them. So we're slapping on all of our Mega Gobble Gums. You know, we've been grinding Liquid Divinium and everything. We get all of our Mega Gobble Gums and everything. We take this and we just get perfect RNG. We get the Gobble Gums when we need... We get the exact Gobble Gums that we wanted when we needed them and we got all of the parts for all of the buildables on the map when we wanted. All of our challenges were super easy and we were able to knock them out like bang 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 be able to upgrade the wonder weapon on the map to the matsumune really easily and the boss fight bro not bro we didn't even like go down that shit was the fucking easiest shit in the world so yeah for the longest time i actually held the fastest time on uh the all gobble gums three player uh world record for zetsubo no shima easter egg i'm not to find it somewhere it's like only like 30 minutes or something like that it was it was just insane it was the fastest i've ever done a major easter egg on any map it we just got insanely lucky we just didn't make a single mistake we were just dialed the fuck in and it was all just an accident on this like a casual thursday afternoon it was so cool i was supposed to include some points about why overwatch is better than call of duty here i'm just gonna ask someone to tell me what they've liked about the last like three call of duties in the comments and if you can actually come up with like cohesive answers on what makes them different and stand up from the other uh games i'll give you a gold medal I don't know. I don't give a shit. I'm not talking about Call of Duty anymore. I'll play Treyarch's new Call of Duty this year, and if it's bad, I'm gonna put Fire Ants on my urethra, because this is my last hope for Call of Duty. I'm not really sure how Minecraft got on here, but I, I don't know what it is. I just feel like if you're a grown man and you play Minecraft, you, you know what I'm gonna say, right? Like, look, yes, we all like Minecraft when we were kids, and then now, if you like Minecraft and you're an adult, you like kids who like Minecraft. It's just bad. Name one person who played this game who did not try to fuck a child. You can't do it. When they arrested Jeffrey Epstein, you know what game they found him playing? It was actually Subnautica. He was like a really big Subnautica fan. He was really into that. But they did also find Minecraft on his archive. 
I think that Overwatch has really only had one person who's been added as a pedophile that was of note, and uh, hopefully it doesn't happen again, or else I'm going to look back on this video and be really upset, so that makes Overwatch better than Minecraft, yeah. <laughs> Helldivers 2 is kind of mid, and it also has a woke leftist agenda. Like, oh, look how cool America is and everything. Oh, yeah. See, why do these bugs have illegal broadcasts and everything? I, I feel like this game is very anti-American. It's promoting the fact that bugs are able to go on the radio and say whatever they want. The bugs are not people, not in my country. These bugs are not allowed, and I do not want this game promoting the idea that they should have access to illegal radio broadcast equipment. Zero out of 10. Overwatch, as far as I'm concerned, does not have anything like that, except for those dirty, disgusting Omnics who are clogging up the game. Except for Ramatra, I love you, you're so hot. Fortnite is so fucking boring, man. Okay, look, I have friends. Maybe one or two of them are watching this video. And if you are, I'm sorry. But look, if you play Fortnite Zero Build, you're a fucking goober. Like, what is the point of this game? without the building. That's like the whole fucking thing, man. No, seriously, without building, this game is trash, pee pee poo poo, dog ass, fart baby shit. And even with the building, this game just feels severely unbalanced and is clearly not intended to be a competitive game, and that's fine. Fortnite is like sick, and it's just intended to be a game that you fuck around on and everything, and you can play as fucking Goku, Master Chief, Ariana Grande, and Pickle Rick and just jerk each other off, and that's fucking sick. I can't even front. I could just not imagine being someone who legitimately plays this game and actually tries every day at it. Like, what does that even say about you as a person? Overwatch for all the problems I have with it. Is it least designed to be a competitive game, and you can still actually play it casually with how fast-paced and flashy it is and actually have fun. Fortnite Zero Build Mode, it literally just feels like one of those like custom Roblox game modes that you'd be playing at like 3 in the morning because you literally have nothing else to play and you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then you tell your friends about it and then you guys never actually like play it after the one time because once you actually play it with your brain on, you're like, wow, this is actually lame as fuck. <laughs> I don't know why I put Stardew Valley in here. I just wanted to take a moment and say, if you're a man and you have this in your Steam library because your girlfriend or some girl you were interested in made you download it, I hope you had fun with it because I had that happen to me and I just couldn't get into it. So if you're a guy and you have any tips on how to get into Stardew Valley, just let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, I guess Overwatch is better than it. Halo Infinite is probably, I think, gonna go down as one of the worst AAA releases I've ever played. I, I do mean that sincerely, because the gameplay is basically the exact same as the gameplay that we had, um, I don't know, like 20 years ago, and then it somehow came out and was missing like 90% of the components that made Halo interesting, like Forge mode, co-op campaign, uh, actual good alternative game modes like Firefight. So for that, I would say this game gets zero out of five coconut nuts dog shit like at least overwatch 2 has never failed to deliver on a promise like everything the developers said happened and came true and like legitimately made all of the fans happy Okay, I'm not really sure how this one got in here either. What the fuck? Who, who, who is putting these in here? Whatever. I feel like Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon really missed a lot of intricacies of Putt-Putt Goes to the Zoo. Like, there were a lot of really subtle character moments and just really good subtle moments of writing and foreshadowing that I feel like were really just lacking from Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon. Putt-Putt Goes to the Zoo had such a stronger emotional core and that final, final betrayal and death, it just fucking hits so hard. Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon kills a beloved character off in the first 30 minutes of the game and expects everybody just to roll with it. And then later when Putt-Putt gets addicted to fucking heroin, they, they just act like it's out of character for him. We've been seeing Putt-Putt struggle with drug addiction for so long. I don't know. It just felt like the creators of the game just had a completely idea from what the fans wanted and it just didn't line up. And Overwatch definitely doesn't have anything going on like that. And it's just a fun 5v5 shooter and I, I love it. Well, I guess I have covered why Overwatch 2 is better than your favorite game. I know that everyone probably is just really having a good time agreeing with each other in the comments and saying, yeah, Big Citrus did a really good job and everything. So shout out to me. I, I fucking crushed it as usual. I'm going to go rub some coconut oil on my feet and I'm going to go to bed. Follow the links in the description if you're not a fucking goober. I've been Big Citrus and have a damn good one.